Okay, welcome to the inaugural episode of Romance Landia TV. My name is Emma <laughs> Berry, and I am here with nine of no doubt your favorite romance writers because they are my favorite romance writers. So we're in for a lot of fun. It's going to be a great time. We have a series of games here um, that we're going to play, and we're going to start with a classic party choice, Fuck, Mary Yeet. And so the five authors who are going to be playing this game are Charlotte, Mia, Nikki, Gwenda, and April. And we're going to go through first and have them introduce themselves and talk about the book that they have either coming up in the next few weeks or that just came out of theirs. And Charlotte, we are going to begin with you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, I'm Charlotte Skyne, in case you didn't know. Uh, my book is When Grumpy Met Sunshine, and it's a Ted Lasso, Roy Kentish inspired um, rom-com, steamy rom-com, as I'm known for, no doubt. Um, and it's got a curvy sunshine heroine and again, a, a grumpy Roy Kentish um, hero. And it's just a lot of fun. And that's my book coming out. Well, I'm, I'm not sure when it'll be now. When this is going out, it'll already be out, I think. Is that right? Yeah. That's correct. We're super excited. <laughs> The next person we want to hear from is Mia. So Mia, tell us about your, your book. Hi, everyone. I'm Mia. And uh, my book is The Starter X, which actually came out on Thursday. Um, and I describe it as how to lose a guy in 10 days meets I like it like that. Um, and it is a story in which a terrible, well, let me fix this, a former terrible girlfriend for hire uh, comes out of retirement for one last engagement and meets her just as devious match in the scheme's target, her younger sister's crush. See how that works out. And we're all hooked. Like, that was it. We're all like, we're ready now for the book. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Next, we're going to hear from Nikki. Nikki, tell us about your book. Hey, everyone. Nikki Payne. My book, Six Lies and Sensibility, is about two sisters who find out at the worst possible time, their father's funeral, that they are the outside children. But all is not lost. They do have a dilapidated inn in Maine that they have to refurbish somehow. And they do it very poorly. But <laughs> along the way, there is someone who says that the land is actually his and he is hot. It's a problem. <laughs> so, Yes, Sex, Lies, and Sensibility. Sounds amazing. Yeah. Next up, we're going to hear from Gwenda. Gwenda, can you tell us about your book? Yeah, I'm Gwenda Bond, and my book is The Frame Up. It's a magic uh, art heist uh, in which a, a woman has to return to her hometown to do an impossible job and win over her mother's former heist crew, which includes the her childhood sweetheart. Uh, so it is a mystery, but it has a romance and it has magic and a very good dog and a found family and all that stuff. And it's, oh, I described, I pitched it as Ocean's Eleven meets the portrait of the picture of Dorian Gray. So, Yay. Sounds amazing. And next is April. April, tell us about your book. Um, so my next release is Not Your Crush's Cauldron. Um, it's the third book in my Supernatural single series, and it's about a plus size witch who's a college professor. She's the youngest witch triplet, and um, she's happy with her life, but she gives an assignment to her students basically to step out of their comfort zone and realizes, you know, she should probably step out a little too. So she makes a kind of like a bucket list of things, um, and it triggers an trick it triggers an alert to the Guardian Angel Affairs Division, and she gets saddled with her own Guardian Angel who happens to be her tattooed, pierced, motorcycle riding new roommate um, and secret crush. Um, and so, uh, you know, and there isn't a rule that he hasn't broken yet, except for don't fall in love with your assignment. And of course, he's going to end up breaking that by the end of the book. So. Excellent. Um, I should have said at the beginning too, and I just remembered we are recording this in advance, but all of these lovely folks are going to be in the chat as we have the inaugural um premiere of this and so they will be my understanding is giveaways and lots of fun in the chat as well so with that let us jump into our first game which is fuck mary yeet and we are going to begin with the classic conundrum the cast of the mummy so friends are you going with rick evelyn or ardith for your choices so charlotte you are first up <laughs> this is the hardest this is the so hard um <laughs> i is there an option 
to have a polyamorous marriage. <laughs> <laughs> that would definitely be my choice. Uh, no, I'll play game, fair. The, you, you have to pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll play fair. I'll play fair. No, it's got to be marry Rick because Brendan Fraser is my has been my number one forever. Uh, it's got to be fuck Ardeth because, well, I mean, look at him. Right. And it's got to be yeet Evelyn, unfortunately. But I'm devastated to do that. Devastated. It is, it is in fact a devastating choice, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, Mia, who are your who are your selections here? They're different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay. It's so, a little chuckle. <laughs> but <laughs> Ardith, um, for the same reasons that Charlotte said. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mary Evelyn, and oh my gosh, I am yeeting Rick because I have no idea what he did in that movie. <laughs> Fair, very fair. Okay, Nikki, what about you? Um, as always, Mia is in my head. I am actively yeeting Rick with no remorse, actually. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, just I'm owning it. Um, and I am really torn between Evan, Evelyn, and Artis. Like they are smoking. They are both really smoking. But Artis seems like he will like kind of enjoy it. A little bit more so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with him and I will marry I'll marry Evelyn because she's extremely capable and you know mm -hmm. every girl needs a wife nothing hotter than than a capable spouse totally agree when uh -huh. what are your choices yeah I'm very similar actually uh except I'm going to yeah I'm gonna um uh I'm gonna I'm gonna, but I'm gonna I'm gonna mix it up I'm gonna mix and match I'm going to uh I'm gonna uh fuck Brendan uh marry Evelyn and yeet Ardeth because you know no because <laughs> just to be just to be contrary it, it is a hard decision <laughs> why do you yeet Nikki like the yeeting of Rick, the yeeting of Rick you 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 held no remorse about it. you don't no. Other... okay no honestly he was he was a sweaty he was like a sweaty <laughs> sweaty <laughs> entire movie like the entire movie just like a shirtless man and like congratulations on your picks <laughs> I need the work. kind of useless compared to Evelyn and Ard and Ard yeah it, it is true useless. let's let's be honest it's true <laughs> Ardith is clearly the most competent. Nobody, <laughs> nobody yeeted her. I mean, like, nobody. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. We've got to get April in on this, though. April, what are your... Oh, yeah. It's funny, because mine are the same as Mia's and Nikki's. So <laughs> I'm I'm fucking Ardith because of the same reasons you said. Um, I'm marrying Evelyn, and I'm yeeting Rick, too. <laughs> I, I didn't really feel that bad about it either own it own it own it wow. <laughs> it was the other two I had a hard time like mm -hmm, I don't know but you know but I think Ardeth has kind of like that fuckboy mentality you know kind of persona to him so there we go <laughs> fair enough I wonder if there's gonna be as much unanimity on our next set of options which is the cast of much to do about, much to do about nothing we've gone with all the like hot 90s movies here oh my goodness <laughs> so hard Denzel Washington, Keanu Reeves, and Emma Thompson. And Charlotte, we are going to begin with you. <laughs> the pressure's <laughs> always on me. <laughs> um, I would say, okay, it's got to be. Oh gosh, this is gonna be art. I think this is gonna be a terrible choice that everyone's gonna hate. It's gotta be marry Denzel, fuck Emma, yeet Keanu. Controversial, yeah. I know. I can already, I can feel oh, the controversy. Charlotte, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mia, it is your turn. Okay. Um, fuck Denzel, because Don Pedro can get it. <laughs> always and always. Um, marry Keanu and yeet Emma, because she said no to Don Pedro. So, <laughs> can't be trusted. I, I don't trust a judgment. Can't be trusted. That's very fair. Very fair. I mean, Nikki, we are dying to hear what you have to say. Y'all, yeah, the way this movie like made me who I am. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Denzel uh, Washington, fuck. <laughs> Everyone saw the way he walked into that like hallway with the little hip swagger. 
Mm-hmm. There's only one in the leather answer. pants. Yeah, yes. the leather, there's only one correct answer. And <laughs> Keanu was like epic in this movie because he was so bad. Like he was he was so bad that he was lovable. So to me, it's Mary Keanu and Emma, who I loved, who was extremely funny. I have to eat her, but I'm contrastly really, really broken up about it because I loved her. But Keanu was just to me so bad he was an epic part of could be an epic part of my life from here (laughs) (laughs) you make me rethink everything nikki all your reasonings i'm like yeah actually you got a point (laughs) think of the joy he'll bring you throughout your life just i mean sorry about that oh oh, gosh oh my gosh oh no what's happened (laughs) (laughs) for some reason the oh, accent no. is yeah, making it funny. He got so that. flustered yeah. that <laughs> I am the resident one who is going to mess up the tech. Apologies. <laughs> no, wait, we're just glad we didn't lose you. Gwenda, we are trying to hear your fuck Mary Geek with the cast of Must Do. I mean, obviously we're fucking Denzel. Look at the man standing there. Like, come on. <laughs> like he's doing so much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go against the grain and marry Emma Thompson because uh, not only is she hilarious and once took her shoes off and carried them on the red carpet while drinking a martini, um, so goals she's a writer so she could help you with your plots. <laughs> like, oh, solid reason. Uh, and Keanu mm-hmm. I know might reappear, so I'm just gonna kill him for eat him for now. <laughs> I will resurrect I later. <laughs> Very fair, and someone has studied ahead. And it- <laughs> <laughs> I just have a feeling. Honestly, Glenda, it's, it's chestnut checkers. I, I see you. I see what you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then I'm the same vein again, like as Mia. The Denzel is definitely the fuck because again, like you just kind of look at him leaning against there on that picture. Um, and then marrying Keanu. And even though I absolutely adore Emma Thompson, I'm a, I'll have to eat her, unfortunately. And that one did break me. I kind of I was torn up about these choices. And I like I can't <laughs> even tell you how long I spent looking at it, going, I just don't know. Like <laughs> I was like, can I like double, like use it, double marry somebody and just, you know, throw I'll be these thinking the away. same thing. I'll be thinking uh, the same thing. Yeah, I need a double sometime. marriage. Yep. <laughs> at last, we are very cruel cool here at Romance Landia TV, and we're making you make choices. <laughs> <laughs> Brings us to our next set of options, which is the cast of Bridgerton. So your choices are Ready John Page, Nicola Coughlin, and Simone Ashley. And let's mix things up so Charlotte isn't always in the hot seat. And Nikki, I, I think we want you to go first. Um, Bridgerton is, um, my love language and here, here's the thing. I'm going to fuck Nicola because she is sultry. She's so soft. Like I know she's so soft and I am going to marry Simone because she seems like she gets stuff done and I really hate to do this, but I think I'm going to yeet Reggie because- (laughs) I just, I think I'm going to yeet Reggie because he, I I just, I just felt like if I would have met him as the arrogant Duke, I would have just wanted to, to throw him out. I just, (laughs) I think Nicola is a soft place to land and I'm, I'm into it. That's Mm -hmm. excellent choices. So Gwenda, we're going to go to you next. Oh, she just made it so hard because I don't disagree with anything you said. However, I'm going to fuck Reggie Jean (laughs) (laughs) and uh, and um, marry Nicola because she's the publishing magnate. And I love Simone Ashley. And yet I'm eating her. (laughs) It's the cruel mistress, man. It puts us in an impossible position. (laughs) April. I love that Gwenda is thinking each time about who can help with publishing. Yes, <laughs> I'm noticing a trend. <laughs> She's like being a life partner here. <laughs> and fact, I'm telling you, like Gwenda is in 3008. We're in 2008. Strategizing. Okay? <laughs> She's in the future, kids. Can you tell us <laughs> someone's behind on deadlines? <laughs> 
<laughs> April, we're dying to hear your Bridgerton choices. All right, I'm the same as Nikki, actually. Um, I'm yeeting uh, Reggie and was it marrying Nicola, and I'm going to fuck Simone. Sultry, Excellent. sultry queen. Yep. Yep. Very fair. Okay, Charlotte, you are up. Okay. Well, I've had some time to think this time, so I think I'm going to marry Nicola, fuck Simone, boot Reggie. <laughs> that's that's it. He's... It helped. It, it, everyone's thoughts help solidify it in my mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doesn't Nicola look like she smells amazing? Like she soft does. and like just really like right like... there in the neck area, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a there's a nuzzle. <laughs> I don't yes. want a nuzzle. Very nuzzleable. <laughs> Mm -hmm. (laughs) okay Mia you are going to be our last person weighing in on this particular set of choices so where are we going okay so I am going to fuck Nicola um and uh, this is a little calculated on my part I feel like I should have some kind of insurance against possibly being the source of um information in her gossip rag so I think (laughs) we at least have sex once. I'll have something over her head. Ooh, um, wow. I'm going Ma- to marry Simone um, because she is amazing on every level. Um, and yeah, I am going to eat Rigi because yeah, <laughs> I just, I don't know. I probably for the same reasons that Nikki said, like just, mm-hmm. but maybe fuck him too sorry <laughs> fuck then you eat and that's what then i was just gonna say <laughs> it's not an option i guess but hit it and quit like it. catch yeah. and kill fucking kill i to say like a black widow option here yeah i i think that in the chat there is going to be a lot of discussion about these choices folks lots of discussion now i as the host am making the executive decision that i think we should move on to the next game so we get the other voices in here so i think in in the chat we'll have to discuss the cast of speed and then the three the three chrises but I think we should move to this or that because we need to hear from our other other folks. So we need to introduce the other four people who are here and hear about their book. And we're going to start with Zio. Tell us all about your your latest project. Sure. Hey, I'm Zio Axelrod. And my latest book, which I guess came out right before we aired this, uh, is the second in my Lily series about an all-female rock band. And this one centers on our drummer, Kayla. And uh, her path to stardom with her band. And also it is a friends to lovers um, romance. There's uh, sex in a tour bus bunk. <laughs> this that was really fun to write. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like, you know, women kicking ass, playing rock and roll. Um, they fall in love over their love of books because, you know, I just, I love a quiet cinnamon roll driver, tour bus driver, you dude. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's like, you know, rock and roll love all the things <laughs> amazing um and next we would like to hear from jenny jenny tell us about your book hi uh my book is canadian boyfriend and um it's about um a woman who as a teenager has a chance encounter with a hockey player at the mall of america and she has um kind of a rough time socially and she sort of evolves this idea that he is really her boyfriend and kind of pretends that she has this absent Canadian boyfriend that gets her out of social situations that she doesn't want to be in, etc. And then fast forward, when the action of the book actually really takes off, um, she, for reasons that the wonderful Sarah McLean says, romance reasons, meets him again in real life um, after she's flamed out on a professional um, ballet career. And he's an, he's a hockey player. Um, and if I can make a shameless plug, if you like audiobooks, even if you don't like audiobooks, you might want to check out the audio version because it's going to be narrated by Joshua Jackson. Man. <laughs> and the wonderful Emily like- Ellett, who is an <laughs> uh, audiobook narrator. The coup of the century, ma'am. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. I don't know how you pulled that off, Jenny. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to tell you that. I have long had this theory that if you don't ask for what you want, you'll automatically never get it. Mm -hmm. So when they said like, any ideas for narrators, I suggested it, but um, never thinking that like, that the producers would go for it or that he would go for it. 
but I don't know. That's amazing. Amazing. I that's that's amazing. All of us. Yeah, amazing. Um, next, Olivia, we want to hear about your book. Hi, I am Olivia Dade, and my book that will have just come out when you see when you see this is At First Spite. It's the first book in a new series set in Harlots Bay, Maryland, which is entirely fictional, as you might have guessed. Uh, and it's a story of Athena, whose engagement ended not too long ago, and her life sort of falls apart at the end of that engagement for a variety of reasons, and she is forced, for romance reasons... <laughs> To move into a 10 foot wide house that is sandwiched between her ex fiance's house and her ex fiance's older brother, who is the person who convinced her ex fiance to leave her. And it is, she decides to, that revenge is a dish best served petty and so <laughs> takes a variety of, uh, does a variety of things, including uh, playing. Uh, monster fucking erotic audiobooks at top volume through her open window <laughs> in his direction because he's sort of judge me and stick uh judgy and stick up his butt um and he minds it a lot less than she thinks he's going to and, <laughs> and so it's a story between her and the older brother so i think it's a lot of fun but there are parts of it ripped directly from my heart too so i'm really proud of it and i hope people enjoy reading it we know that they will. And Anita, we would love to hear about your book. Um, yes, I'm Anita Kelly. And my book that will have just come out is uh, How You Get the Girl. It is a sapphic sports adjacent romance, I would call it, about um, two women who end up coaching a high school girls basketball team together and uh, practice dating along the way because romance <laughs> um and it is for romance it's, reasons <laughs> it's um i mean actually one of the main characters julie is trying to figure out um if she is ace or not um or somewhere along the ace spectrum um and l's like i'll help you figure it out so um but yes yeah, so it's the last book in my three book series that started with love and other disasters so i'm both proud and um you know sad to say goodbye to this world yeah. Well, it sounds amazing. So the challenge that is in front of you all is this or that. So we're going to give you impossible choices, but you must choose. And your first impossible choice is the doorway lean or exposed forearms. And so Zia, we are going to begin with you. Good, because I forgot to say the name of my book. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's my fault. It's Girls with Bad Reputations. But I've been thinking about this doorway lean versus exposed forearms thing because I immediately thought exposed forearms until I remembered. I don't know how many of you guys watched Buffy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah. there's there's there was this thing in the fandom. There was a meme about Spike. There's a scene where he's on one side of a door and Buffy's on the other side of the door and he runs his hand down the door and it's the most erotic like door scene I've ever seen. <laughs> so I'm going to go with Dory Lean just for that. And also because of the way Denzel was leaning in that, that this, that uh, photo that we had there for Much Ado. But yeah, yeah. I'm going Dory Lean. <laughs> A super reasonable decision. Okay, Jenny. Doorway Lean. Yeah, Doorway Lean. And, okay. uh, yeah, Doorway Lean. There's just something about the um, casual confidence, I guess, that accompanies yes. A good doorway lean. Okay, excellent. Very good. No hesitation there. Olivia, doorway lean or exposed forearms? I thought about this probably far too hard. <laughs> and I think what struck me is because there was a bunch of TikTok videos went around, I guess, was it last year at some point of like people trying the doorway lean? And it seemed like, and I don't think it has to be this way, but it seemed like a lot of what those videos were trading on was a height differential. Mm -hmm. And I I did not, I, I have to be there for people who, I'm 5'2", <laughs> I want to be there for people who may not have that high differential, but who do have forearms. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so I'm advocating for the forearmed among us, <laughs> saying that everyone can, if you have forearms, then you can bear your forearms, even if you're short like me. Okay. Excellent. That's, very, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Okay, Anita, 
doorway lean or exposed forearms? I am also team forearms. Um, I'm attracted to my own forearms. Uh, I just think, well, and also like I was thinking about this also way too hard. Like the doorway lean seems like an intimate, like type of thing that has to happen between people. Whereas like you can lust over someone's forearms in the subway. Like, you know, like <laughs> any forearms that you see are like open for the ogling. And I like that like secret kind of pining. So forearms. Excellent. The democratic decision. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our next impossible choice is secret baby or love triangle. And Zio, we are going to go to you first again. I can't tell you how much I loathe both of these. <laughs> Why do you think um, I chose them? I know. I'm going to have to go with love triangle and just add a, a wide shoes. I think that's original. <laughs> I think that that makes complete sense. Yeah. Olivia, Olivia, this is in fact an impossible one. Um, Jenny, secret baby? Yeah, or- I, oh. I could just say ditto to that. I would also choose love triangle kind of under duress I guess <laughs> under duress <laughs> very fair okay Olivia you put this mean cruel choice to everyone which one are you taking why <laughs> okay again please keep in mind too much thought into everything so here's the thing if you do a love triangle in a way that it seems plausible that the main character could choose either one of two options then if and when that character rejects one of those options you feel terrible. So if you've done your job as a writer, that's always niggling at me, feeling bad for the third person who does not get chosen. So to me, even though I'm not, I am, if you know me, you know, I am not a fan of children, (laughs) romance, but I feel like there, you can make secret baby work in a way. I think I could probably find a way to write it. that would not be it might be acceptable to me. But the thing with writing a good love triangle is I think if you write it well, then I will never be satisfied because either it's really imbalanced or mm. I end feeling really bad for the person who's not chosen. So Secret Baby. I would never thought I would choose Secret Baby for anything, but I choose Secret Baby. <clears throat> and you did it to yourself. Yeah, I <laughs> do. It's like the two, the two tropes that I figured most of us probably dislike the most. I was like, I have to, I have to put it in there. Anita, speaker baby or love triangle? Um, I would choose uh, a queer love triangle where it just ends up in polyamory. So, um, which I've only read like once or twice, but um, there is more poly romance coming into traditional mainstream romance publishing as well finally so uh love triangle I love that three of you went that way like that was great (laughs) okay our (laughs) next one is fake dating or marriage of convenience and Zio you are up first again ah these are so I think I'm gonna go with fake dating just because I think you can have a lot more fun with it marriage of convenience sometimes there's a bit of um I mean, I guess you could have animosity in both situations, but I think in my head, fake dating just sounds like more fun because you can do like more outrageous stuff with it. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Very good. Jenny, fake dating or marriage? Um, I actually, like in some ways, I feel like the vibes of these two tropes are very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, like depending on how they're done. And I like both of them, but I think I'm also going to go with f- fake dating. Why? I don't know. I just, it's just a feeling. Okay. Very good. Olivia. I think I, I prefer marriage of convenience. And the reason is, is that I am a forced proximity. Like I, I force proximity is my jam and my catnip and with fake dating. Yes. You're with them for the fake dates, but that doesn't mean that usually marriages of convenience mean they have to off you usually move into the same residence yeah. together and so mm-hmm. forth. And he usually buys you a lot more time on the page together. So that's my favorite. Okay. Very good. Anita, big dating or marriage of convenience? I would say marriage of convenience because um, from a writing perspective, I think it's so much harder to pull off. Um, Like you need to really be a good plotter with like a plausible um, like premise to make it work. And so whenever I read it, I'm just like, 
I, it's just so delicious. I, I love it so much. <laughs> Whereas there's, you know, like there's a million fake dating books for good reason. It's a fun trope, but I feel like to do marriage of convenience as well takes some skill that I don't have, but I admire. Yeah, I agree, I don't have it. <laughs> Excellent. These are all like, I'm glad that we're getting some some disagreement in our choices. Our we were 50-50 next... there. Yeah, we were. We were totally even. Our next choice is Grumpy versus Sunshine. Zia, where you land on this one? Oh, this is tough. I love, that's one of my, that's my favorite pairing, I think, Grumpy Sunshine. Um, I think today, on this date, I'm going to go with Grumpy, just because I love, um, like, the grumpy person with the heart of gold thing you know that's like my favorite microtrope so yeah i'll go grumpy give me a gruff gruff person <laughs> very good mm. Jenny, grumpy or sunshine i am also grumpy um i just think it's kind of a more interesting but i will add the caveat that um i feel like the whole idea of grumpy is has taken on a it's really captured people's imaginations which is great but I have written a couple books where I didn't think I was writing anybody grumpy, but the reviews were like, ooh, grumpy, grumpy plus grumpy. And I, yep. maybe I'm just grumpy. Maybe that's just like <laughs> the way I write people. But um, I feel like there's been like grumpy inflation. That's what I'm trying to say. So I like a <laughs> true grump <laughs> or deflation, maybe. Thank you, Roy Kent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Roy Kent is grumpy, but like people who are, you know, somewhat, um, unlikable are not necessarily grumpy anyway that's yeah. a whole other topic but. yeah or like I've I've had like um grumpy sunshine with one of my books I'm like actually he's just autistic like like that's different from grumpy mm -hmm. but anyway but yeah so I'm with you <laughs> Olivia grumpy or sunshine I think in rom-com world that it as long as grumpy and this is my caveat with sort of grumpy is as long as grumpy is not basically dickish like that that yeah, grumpy yeah. does not become someone who's a jerk to the people around them and it's just like cranky then i find that if you're writing a rom-com there can be there's a lot of inherent humor in someone who is just congenitally cranky uh and i've written some of those characters myself and it's a great deal of fun so yeah anita grumpy or sunshine um yeah so to kind of be contrary to my my gut because my gut feeling is also to say grumpy I love writing grumpy characters and being grumpy characters I have so much fun with them um but as a like reader and writer I'm going to choose for this question sunshine just because I feel like in particular um I've noticed when the sunshine is a woman um that's like the most hated character in romance in what I have viewed um, in like reviews and stuff. If there's a sunshiny woman, she's a ditz, she's annoying. Um, and for, and I think it's just a lot of like sexist reasons coming into our perception. Um, so I think to be sunshine in this world actually takes a lot of courage. So I'm gonna go sunshine. Excellent. And frankly, it's very, it's very tends to be, and I've written this myself this way, so it's not an insult, but when you see Grumpy Sunshine, if it's uh, MF romance, it is like 85, 90% of the time the female yeah. is the sunshine character. And yeah. I wrote uh, all the feels where she was meant to be just competent and matter of fact, but not grumpy. But people call it Grumpy Sunshine. But they this also is what I mean, yeah. Reverse mm -hmm. Grumpy Sunshine, which I really dislike because it's sort of <laughs> implying yeah. that there is a gendered aspect to that, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is yeah. very gender essentialist in really uncomfortable ways for me. So I don't don't love that. Yeah. <clears throat> I am going to make the executive decision that I think we should move on to kind of our third round because you guys are giving such wonderful, thoughtful answers that I want to <laughs> So we're going to go around and I want to hear your, the favorite line or the favorite scene from your new release, the one that we're talking about today. And Zio, we're going to start with you. I feel like you're, you keep coming up first. <laughs> Why do I keep coming up first? Okay. In Girls with Bad Reputations. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me think. Favorite scene. Gosh. I, it's funny. Like it's it, it just came out or it's coming out. And um, I had to reread it because, you know, in trad, like everything takes forever. So I was like listening to... <laughs> This is gonna sound so strange. I talked earlier about the the bunk scene on the bus. <laughs> right before this scene, um, 
my MMC Ty is trying to creep into his bunk to go to sleep and Kayla my FMC is right sleeps right across from me and she's not sleeping so she pulls her curtain back and she's like you know hey you know come hang out with me and they're chatting and he says you know what were you th what were you doing if you weren't sleeping and she said thinking he said about what <laughs> and she said peeing and he's like what and she's like you know when you're really comfortable in bed but you have to go to the bathroom and you don't want to get up because you're really comfortable. <laughs> I, you know, I was just thinking about that. He's like, well, don't let me stop you. Go ahead. She's like, no, I don't actually have to go. I just was thinking about it. <laughs> and it, I was listening to the audio book last night and I actually started laughing at my own book. And I was like, okay, <laughs> that, that scene works. But for some reason right now, that's my favorite scene. It's a, it's a weird moment, but it's my favorite scene right now. I love it. <laughs> I love those weird moments that feel very authentic. Like, I think that's what makes romance so delicious and relatable. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Gwenda, we're going to go to you now. What oh. is your scene or moment in your All right, I picked up, I don't know about moment, and I, but I picked, a, I mean, like, I have a bunch of them, but I do have a line I really like, because I think I decided to put, like, a journal from the past in this book. So there's a little book within a book, and the voice is completely different than the rest of the book. Um but so I'm just going to read this one line, which is not very romancy, if I can see it. What he does not, um, what he does not understand is that I am a book of secrets bound in skin, filled with blood, bone, and magic. Mm. Mm. That is a line. Mm. Beautiful. Olivia, we're going to go to you now. I mean, there's a scene that is closest to my heart, which is sort of on the, the bonus dust dust jacket for the pre-order bonus is a bathtub scene um which is very emotional but it was hard to write because it was so emotional so i'm gonna go with the scene that was most fun for me to write and the scene that was most fun for me to write is when matthew the older brother who again is sitting down like trying to reconcile his bills with his bank account and suddenly hears uh, a very loud audiobook being played next door <laughs> Uh, about a Sasquatch threesome. <laughs> <laughs> Including, there's a section that I wrote that I had to think about for a while because if it's a threesome, I figure there has to be lube involved. But I'm like, if they're Sasquatches, like they're not going to have access to lube that easily. So I'm like, how would you do that? So I decided that it would be um, cave made because it's not homemade because they don't have homes because they're Sasquatches. They would have to be cave made uh, deer fat lube. <laughs> wow i just want you to know that i put thought into these scenarios <laughs> coming up with them. That's and we, sort of our we appreciate it sasquatch threesomes that i am providing for my readers realism wow <laughs> i'm so glad you picked that scene <laughs> that's so good <laughs> on that note nikki you are up next what is your favorite line or scene from your book Oh my gosh, my favorite scene is when Nora, uh, when Bear takes Nora to the reservation and she has this question that she thinks is so stupid and she doesn't know like how to ask or how to have these cultural conversations. Mm -hmm. And I, I love this because they um, take this moment to ask each other stupid questions and she starts, and I'll just read this like couple of quick um, lines back and forth. Um, what do I call you? Bear, I, I like it when, no, like, what do you call yourself? Do you call yourself Native American? No. First Nations? Ew, Bear wrinkled his nose. Tribesmen? Gross. Indigenous, she offered. Sounds like a kind of fungus. Bear, Nora stumped her foot. What can I call you? And he looks at her and he says, call me Abenaki. And it's just this moment where they're like um, yeah. allowing um, each other to, um, to understand their kind of language of like, what do, what am I called? Who am I to you? And I just think particularly with a hero and heroine who are like black and native American, like talking about these things in a way with all the scales off is, mm -hmm. it's just a, a fun moment. And it also somehow manages to be sexy. Like, don't let this fool you. It's kind of hot, but <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite scenes. Definitely hot. Jenny, it is, you are up. Favorite line or favorite scene? Um, I think my favorite scene is um, takes place at a Chuck E. Cheese. Do people know what that is? It's not actually yeah. called Chuck E. Cheese. It's got a fictional name, but um, uh, Aurora grew up with a serious dance mom and was on a professional ballet trajectory. And so all she did was 
dance and go to school. And she always wanted to have her birthday party there or go to a birthday party there, but she's never been. Um, and he, Mike, the male main character finds out that, and they're not really together at this point, but he's just a really good guy. So um, he takes her, he surprises her by taking her to basically Chuck E. Cheese. It's called something else in the book. Um, and they have just a, a really fun romantic date, but, but I, what I like about it is the juxtaposition of, you don't really think of that kind of setting as a setting for romance, mm -hmm. but um, he's done this small gesture in his eyes that meant everything to her. So they, they play the games and she smokes them on the dancing game and they just, they, ha they have a good time. I love that. So that kind of, like, can be romance in a, a very quotidian location. I mean, ski ball is the way to every woman's heart. <laughs> well, ski balls at, at the end. The grand gesture involves ski ball. I will tell you that much. Wow. Mm. April, I'd love to hear from you. So favorite line or favorite scene? So this was hard because, so I guess one of them was, actually comes after um, my character's first kiss um, because it was like a, oops, because remember, he's not supposed to fall in love. So he kind of does that stupid thing and is like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, that shouldn't have happened. And she gets really ticked off. And uh, pretty much uh, he follows her into her room and she stalks away and she grabs the first thing that she sees and tosses it at him and it's a tampon and it hits him right in the forehead. And he's kind of like, did you just hit me with a sanitary product? And she's like, yeah, and I just stocked up for the next three months. So, you know, keep letting the stupid fall from your mouth. And then like, I don't know. And every time I did like edits and page proofs every time I got to that scene it just kind of made me chuckle because I just pictured you know oh maybe I wonder what my husband would do if I just tossed a tampon on his forehead and <laughs> let it bounce off his head see what he did <laughs> and Anita it is your turn um I think one of my favorite scenes in how you get the girl is um a one-on-one -on -one basketball scene uh where the basketball team has kind of like dared you know the two coaches to go one-on-one -on -one. and uh I, I just had so much fun writing it and I feel like it was a scene where so L is has always been Julie's like basketball hero from when she was like a teen and so she's always been super nervous around her um but when they can actually like get on the court then some of her like natural personality and competitiveness can come out um and it's also kind of a healing scene for Elle, who has not been on a basketball court for a long time. Um, and so just that, like, it was an important scene for both of them, while also just being a really fun scene to write. Yeah, yeah. Love that. Mia, your favorite moment or favorite scene? Uh, so I have a line. Um, and the setup is that the female MC Vanessa, is meeting uh, the male MC. Uh, for the first time and he is very handsome which she notes um but he also makes an assumption about her that annoys her and then he follows that up with several statements that just make it worse and so she makes this observation which i hope is relatable or actually because i like you i hope it's not relatable um he's a molten chocolate lava cake that doesn't erupt when you sink your spoon into it. A beauty on the outside that doesn't deliver the goods as advertised. Oh, what a punch in the gut. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> and I've had that experience, unfortunately, and it is so disappointing. So disappointing. Charlotte, um, so favorite moment, favorite scene, favorite line? Um, okay, well, I would say that my favorite scene to write and to reread, to be honest, uh, is probably the scene. The my characters, Alfie and Mabel, they uh, go to a Beyonce concert, and afterwards they get stuck uh, in, a, in a broken down car on their own, and it's at the very very height of their fake dating tension. Things are all coming to a head. That they both want each other. They can't admit they want each other. And, uh, well, things progress to only one car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a, that was a very fun scene for me to write. I enjoyed that very much. I love this for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, Emma, you should do, you should go on this one too. Uh, sure. So my <laughs> book that is coming out in October is, um, is about 
this guy, he's an actor and he's in his 40s and he's sort of, people think of him as being the character that he played on TV when he was in his 20s and he's kind of never been able to separate himself from that. If we were thinking, say, Joshua Jackson, a character maybe who'd oh. been on Dawson's Creek-esque show, like that wouldn't be um, a myth. But he's been cast as um, the like new hottie on this historical romantic drama on a streaming show. <clears throat> and um, then the love interest is the intimacy coordinator on the show. And so there's a scene where they are friends. It's a very slow burn, a very, um, very friends to lovers-esque book. And they go hiking in the Scottish Highlands. And they take, as they would say, on Ted Lasso and Ussy. Um, and in that moment, when he sees them together on her phone screen, he kind of like tumbles into this crush that he's been trying not to have for her. And he's just like like a big softy. And I just really love that particular moment. So that would probably be my favorite, my favorite moment in my book. So yeah. Well, I think we should move to probably the final game that we're going to have time for. And I should say, I think at this point, everyone who's in the audience is going to be like buying all of your books. They're going to be like, sorry, pause. I have to go get all of these titles. Um, but we're going <laughs> to wrap up, I think, with two truths and a lie. Um, and so I think we should let Gwenda get us started with that one. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling you are very well suited for this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is usually I mess this game up and do two lies and a truth. And then when people start guessing, I have completely messed everything up. Uh, so let's see. I have um, a broken ankle right now. <laughs> um, I have been vetted by the Secret Service. And I speak fluent French. Ooh. So anyone who wants to weigh in on that, Zio, Mia, and Olivia are the folks who are officially playing, but anyone else who wants to weigh in on that, I think, or I would I, I guess it. I, I think we know, I know that you have broken a bone recently. <laughs> I, I thought you so were just going to say, I know that you're broken. And it's like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I think Secret Service thing is sort of something, not something you would make up unless it was something that you actually have done. <laughs> so I'm guessing it's French. That's yes. my guess. We, uh, oui, correct. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Very fair. Okay. Mia, would you like to go next? Sure. Okay. So um, I actually wrote these down so that I can um, keep a straight face. And just bear in mind, this is context. This is all drunk Mia, okay? <laughs> okay. Okay. I once got drunk and carried a man on my back across a stage in a game of musical human chairs. I once got drunk and competed in a reggae contest and won first place. I once got drunk and got on a, sing, a swing and fell off midair. Anyone have guesses? The fact uh, that you've done two of those things. Yeah. <laughs> I do think I that doing while you're drunk is a brilliant innovation on this yeah. on this game. For me, <laughs> I, I, I want to call bull. I want to call bullshit on the on the reggae contest because like the the tongue the tongue control like you need to win a reggae contest while drunk is like. Is, is high key and say. Oh, I should but, clarify. But, reggae dancing. But Mia, so. Mia oh. is a singer by training. Oh, it's yeah, reggae I, dancing. Oh. Sorry. Reggae oh, dancing. Dancing. Oh. dancing. Oh. oh, that changes things. That changes yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say the human chair or whatever it's, it was. Is the lie? Yeah. Is the lie? Oh, no. I can kind of see that happening. <laughs> That one seems so specific. <laughs> that it seems I don't like... see all of these happening, really. I know. Yeah. I think me as the winner of like coming the up with the truth. <laughs> I see the I see the swing thing as the lie. I, I go for the swing. I'm going for the swing thing because the other the others are just so random. It's it's almost like you would have to be a writer of fiction to come up <laughs> with the... Okay. 
So the answer is the lie is winning first place in ah, oh. oh. reggae oh. dancing. <laughs> the you th you threw us off You're with that, that dance happened. correction. You threw us off. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, Olivia, you are up next. I made a tactical error in this game. <laughs> I should never have put Mia in this game with me. She knows me too well. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right we're gonna try this all right uh here we go i have a large rock collection background i've licked one of the rocks in my collection uh, i've i've never broken a bone i used to be a sergeant can we get clarification on sergeant like in what like sergeant pepper like <laughs> like a, mil a military sergeant Sergeant in the or oh, okay. Okay. Were you a beetle, ma'am? <laughs> are you saying you were a beetle? <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. You've never hmm. broken a bone, is my guess for the lie. That's that's my guess too. Okay. I'll go with the group. All right, me. All right, Mia, what do you think? Because I think you may know what one of these is referring to. I, I'm like, do I? <laughs> think about it. I feel like there's a play on words here somewhere. You're tricking us. You blown toned. I mean, <laughs> you got that Gwenda that was a little French. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we need the music here, like the Japanese. Yeah, I know. So that was like, <laughs> we need we need to make a guess. So what is it? Are we going with broken? I... Is that the 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 sense of the group? I just I don't think she licked a rock. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> like I just can't picture her doing that. I thought, I thought it was hot. Absolutely. <laughs> I want to know what rock. But, I mean, yeah. everyone is throwing me off. So I, I'm so confused. I feel like the rock got licked. I think it did. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 really? that rock got licked. Yeah. My, I mean, I have friends who are super into rocks and I could see them licking rocks. So <laughs> I just, I, I want to, I, I think it's a sergeant one because anyone who's a sergeant, like is, they're very specific. Unless you can only be a sergeant mm -hmm. in a, you know, like mm -hmm. a sergeant mm -hmm. in the something, you know, like it always follows with something else. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a good point. But Tell I think she, Olivia, sergeant, you stumped us. Okay, you, stumped. you will let me off the hook. <laughs> okay, so, um, my first summer working at Colony Williamsburg, I worked at the military encampment as a sergeant. Um. A very the world's least convincing sergeant <laughs> in the entire world. Um, so that one is correct technically. I and I have I have never broken a bone and I have not licked a rock. I'm <laughs> those things a lot of them are toxic. Like I'm not licking them. Some are actually like are soluble. Doing that. I feel like you should be offended. <laughs> I feel like you should lick a rock as soon as this is over. Just Google yeah. like safe rock to lick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then next time, you know, you'll try right. it again. You turn me into like a rock tree safe. safe rocks to lick. <laughs> Do <Sorry>. it. <laughs> yes. Very good. Be the change you want to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh it's like an experience right? i've never thought about and now i'm tempted to i mean i'm wearing a bunch of magic rock bracelets so. <laughs> oh my gosh. i don't it's know it's time Gwenda. do the licking Come moss at moss agate do you think do we think that's safe <laughs> i i do but i can't promise that until i do some light googling <laughs> all right we'll see if i die before the sense <laughs> Okay, for our final offering for Two Treats in a Lie, we're going to hear from Zio. 
Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. I once learned a foreign language so that I could watch a television show without subtitles. I once drove a Formula One race car. And Erica Badu once opened for me at a show. I want all of those to be true. I know. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hmm. What was the first one again? She learned, once a language. learned a foreign language. Yeah. I could totally I, see you doing I, that. I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> I believe that. And obviously. I think it's the Formula One race car. I think Me it's too. the Formula yeah. One. Yeah. Yeah, it's the Formula One. <laughs> <laughs> these were excellent y'all those were all very very good ones we're gonna go to our our final game but we're gonna go like fast okay like super fast through this game so that we can get them in what we have here yeah so april jenny anita and nikki are gonna be playing anita, we... do you want me to do it instead oh <laughs> okay i'll do it instead that's fine okay so we have a, pun. <laughs> a trope and then a location and you all are in, they've had these in advance. So we're getting some good titles here and we're going to get some punny titles. Our first one is Secret Baby Dairy Farm. You guys, I have so many. Sperm okay. Nursery. Sperm <laughs> Nursery. <laughs> How's that not kill? I have, I, I have Utterly His Baby. <laughs> I, have a, I have a similar one, which is cheese your baby like cheese your baby cheese your baby <laughs> very nice <laughs> yes very good oh wait we were supposed to hear from one more person so olivia was subbing in for uh for anita okay excellent so april we haven't heard from you um and this is coming from the obstetric nurse um <laughs> if i was trying the only thing i could think of, think of was milk it baby <laughs> <You're going. laughs> there you go. oh nice okay our second one is second chance set at a theme park nikki do you want to go first uh yes i have second loops a doozy and <laughs> all about a roller coaster going going crazy Excellent. very good okay olivia um i went a little probably a little blue on this one uh riding her ex <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a huge hit on KU. <laughs> Jenny, what do you got? Roller coaster redo. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. I kind of boring, that. but yeah, that was good. It. That was good. Like I would purchase that. Yeah. <laughs> April? I have the second ride. <laughs> <laughs> a little on the nose, if you will. <laughs> combination is enemies to lovers set at a fishing hut nikki oh my gosh you guys i had nothing but like um something i kept focusing on reeling them in but i couldn't get the enemies part you know i couldn't get the enemies mm -hmm. part but yeah i, I had nothing okay. livia i'm i decided that one of them would be a fish shifter so it would be <laughs> It would be sleep sleep with the fishes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a it's a and it's me celebrity's mob romance. Mob romance. Featuring, <laughs> featuring a fish shifter. So <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, mine is hook, line, and sink her. Oh yes. Nice. Kiss. April, do you have one for us? Mine. <laughs> It was funny. Mine is hook, line, and fry. Kind of like fish fry. <laughs> I could not. I Like Nikki, I could not get the enemies part. I'm like, Aria, I'm just going all fishy. Let's just go. <laughs> hook, line, and fry. Got, got kind of dark, kind of hot at the yeah. end. <laughs> yeah. Our final set here is snowed in plus convenience store. Nikki? Oh, why am I first all the time, y'all? This is, this is like very very bad but like i kept thinking of something around um the aisle and aisle you know like i love you or something i don't know i that's that's all i i really thought very hard but i'm not a 
I'm not punny, turns out. <laughs> Olivia, do you have a Snowden convenience store one, one for us? I mean, this is not like the pinnacle of my wit, but <laughs> I hope. I, hope. Uh, it's, I was thinking inconvenient love in the frozen aisle. Oh. Oh. <laughs> inconvenient love. I mean, it's not great, but it was what I could do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, do you have one for us? I do. Um, Circle K snow day. Seriously? It's not really a pun, but it's cute. It is very cute. Very cute. It. Yeah. It rhymes. April? Um, mine's not very punny either. I just have inconvenient love. Nice. Also, I thought frozen in the frozen aisle because they're snowed in and it's yeah. freezer. Yeah. I just want to say real quick that I recently pitched this idea before I saw this slide to my agent when we were trying to think of new ideas. I was like, what if there's like a whole romance novel set in the sheets? And they can't leave. Shockingly, <laughs> shockingly, she didn't want to move on with that idea. But, but now I'm, but now I'm really inspired. So it could happen. Yeah, I feel like there's not enough convenience store romance. Just generally. no. There's so much that could happen at a sheets. So much, and you get anyway. you get snowed in at a sheets. I yeah, mean, everything so there. there's a supermarket like you... sweep type competition going on, yeah. and then you're snowed in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It the bestseller to- that's not going to happen. <laughs> you were robbed, Anita. You were robbed. Your opportunity. <laughs> I don't know. Keep your eye- keep your eyes out. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> and you look for it. Okay. Look for it in the frozen foods aisle. <laughs> when that is going to drop to where you live. <laughs> Freaking love you. We're at the end of our hour. Oh, hook up in aisle eight. There you go. I want to go around one. Oh, that would be good. I want to go around one more time and give everybody a chance to remind us all of your book title and the date that it came out or that it will come out. So, Zio, we're going to start with you. Sure. Uh, it's Girls with Bad Reputations, and it was out on February sixth. And then we're going to go to Gwenda. The Frame Up out February thirteenth. So the perfect Valentine's Day. Uh... <laughs> Excellent. April. And mine is also February 13th, and it's Not Your Crush's Culture. Charlotte. Um, mine's out the February the 6th, or it will will have been, and it's When Grumpy Met Sunshine. Mia. Mine is The Starter X, and it's an Audible original, so free to Audible subscribers and available for purchase for everyone else. Anita. Uh, How You Get the Girl, also out uh, February 13th. Nikki. Sex, Lies, and Sensibility, also in the February 13th Club. Mm. It's, a, it's a wonderful day, man. We're all going to be broke on February 13th. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Between the 6th and the 13th, it's... Olivia. Yeah. <laughs> also on February 13th. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's at first spite. And I would like to note that my tongue feels weird. <laughs> Try in the crack. Oh my <laughs> god. Does it feel magical? No, no, Does it like feel magic? It, it's not good. Do you have special powers now? Yeah. Oh <laughs> Your origin story. Spe- special rock powers. <laughs> Sorry. Can you imagine this ER doctor just like, did you look a rock? We get this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, do you want to remind us of yep. your title and release date? Canadian Boyfriend, uh, January 30th, it was out. Excellent. This has been such a pleasure and thank everyone in the audience so much for joining us. Bye, guys. Bye. bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.